We are now approaching a week into the new regime of the ULEZ extension, which started at the beginning of last week, when, yes, if you've got a diesel car that's older than 2015, you're then due to pay a ULEZ charge of £12.50 per day, or a petrol car that's older than 2005. Well, I'm delighted to be joined now for this segment by Howard Cox on what I call Tyscare. Well, it all sounds very great and noisy and fast, but of course, in many towns and villages and cities, you're not actually allowed to go more than 20 miles an hour now, so there's no chance of making that noise, particularly if you've got an electric vehicle. But a very warm welcome to Howard Cox. Thank you for joining me. Of course, Howard is the founder of Fair Fuel UK and London mayoral candidate. Howard, uh, just a massively busy week, I know, for you uh, with this extraordinary uh, incident, uh, activity, uh, event with the ULEZ extension. Hard to know what to call it, really, uh, or just a sort of theft of uh, tax from the poorest. Um, uh, you've probably never known a week like it, frankly. No, you're absolutely right, Richard. Good morning, and uh, I'm keeping a, a, an eye on my bank account uh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's been a hell of a week. I've been, I don't think I've stopped. Um, I've been to about 10 anti ULEZ protests, and the anger is palpable out there. Uh, and I mean really powerful. It's growing even stronger than that. And people are just fed up for the back teeth that's being used as cash cows. And I've been campaigning, as you well know, for 13 years for the motors, particularly on, uh, on, on fuel duty. But uh, the people are just fed up. They're, they're, this is their uh, absolutely uh, a piece of transport that's freedom for use. They're secure in the vehicle. They can go when they want. They can go where they want, when they want, etc. But they, they are seeing it now. It could be a noose around people's neck. And let me uh, just tell you what th this person said uh, to me just now. It came up about two minutes ago. I'm a pensioner. I live in a village just outside of a city. It's vital for my mental health that I can use my car to visit my family who live too far away from me to use public transport. I also need to use it for shopping, etc. I've got thousands of those comments coming in, and yet we've got a mayor in London who doesn't give an absolute fig about anything to do with people's I, uh, uh, mental health. All he cares about is actually uh, filling up or paying off his debt. And I can imagine you are, are receiving so many stories from people who are affected many of them are absolutely heart-wrenching and uh, you know it really is that level of anger is palpable that no question at all is probably not going to go away no. um how, how do you respond though to those on the other side of this very controversial contentious debate who uh, you know, they're saying well hang on a minute we've got reports here that say uh, that actually uh, this will this will save four thousand lives, and this will reduce asthma and lungs. I mean, what, why? What, you know, they genuinely believe those claims. So, what do you say to those people on that side of the debate? Well, they've been scaremongered. They've been brainwashed. That four thousand death lie uh, is a total lie. It, it 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 hasn't happened. That is just a statistical construct. It's in a modelling uh, uh, program. It's in an Excel spreadsheet where people have actually. Uh, fundamentally, what how it was calculated was actually looking at uh, uh, deaths all right across a, a massive number of people, dividing it by the number that they first thought of. And I'm taking the mickey here a bit, but it is not real. What is 4,000 deaths mean is that in terms of actually uh, life expectancy might be reduced by something like half a day to up to two weeks. It is a complete and utter scaremongering, and Sadiq Khan is using it. And as I said many times before, he he dictates policy based on emotion, not fact. Okay, so that uh, that was the one on the asthma, and then there's obviously this other big claim from uh, Transport for London's own report that actually the first ULEZ has made a big uh, improvement in air quality, which has been then. Uh, subject to some dispute with Imperial College. What's what's your response to those who who say, well, actually, it's already made a dramatic reduction? Well, it's interesting, actually. They looked at that Imperial College, and we'll come on to some other stuff about Imperial College, which has actually been actually proven to be wrong as well, uh, um, is that in that time that they did that measurement, um, 
clean fuel technology and cars became cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. There is no control to actually measure side by side. I'm a, a scientist, I'm a pharmacologist, biochemist by training. We always had to have a, a control. In other words, things where, which weren't, would have gone on as normal. Yes. And that was measured. And those sorts of things aren't happening. The Imperial College thing as recently, as you probably saw the deputy uh, mayor, I think it's Miss Gonzalez, she actually uh, asked the Imperial College, because Imperial College came out with saying the ULS expansion will not make any demonstrable difference to the, the air quality we breathe. I think, and, yes, I think it was a lady called um, Shirley Rodriguez. Oh, sorry, had, I was tried to, that's right, well, had tried to well get spot. a change, hadn't, hadn't, uh, hadn't she? So that, well that's a, a huge difference between what TfL were claiming and actually what um, Imperial College's own scientists from a different department were saying. Well, and also, the little matter of Imperial College had got approaching £1 million of, uh, of uh, research grants from uh, the mayor. Uh, uh, this can't be right at all. The important thing is the air quality in London is, is the best it's ever been, and it's getting cleaner by the day. Where it is not getting cleaner is down in the underground, where it's about uh, up to nearly 2,000 percent more dirty than at roadside level. And, and it's ridiculous. And, of course, you've got the evidence of that because you've actually been down with your air quality meter to actually measure it, haven't you? Yes, I have indeed. I, I mean, in fact, when I came on to you a, a few months back and I showed it then, I went, I'd been to 14 uh, underground stations at, at roadside level outside the tube and right down on the platform. And that's where, the, where we got up to 1,800% more in terms of particulates. And, and, and they're the little sooty particles that can uh, are carcinogenic and they can cause real problems. But I've actually done some more and I'm up to 36 stations. And, and, and the data continues to be round about up to 2,000% more dirty down, uh, down on the platform. And, and then, of course, there's the interesting point about a lot of the tube stations have air vents that are pushing air out of the tubes, uh, the, you know, the tubes and the tunnels into, uh, into the air, the roadside. So presumably, if the air in the tube stations and the tunnels is that toxic, then those air vents are pushing much more toxic air into the much cleaner air uh, that, um, that, that we all live and breathe by. Well, I've got a, a, an a, a exclusive story coming out, it, well, hopefully next weekend. Uh, we're doing some research and et cetera, making sure we get all the fact checks right. But exactly that, uh, the people who uh, work in the underground are actually subject to some serious, you know, we're talking about 2,000 percent more when you stand on the platform but these people work inside the tubes themselves and they're trying to keep it clean for all of us but that gets moved around the ventilation shafts and your point's quite uh, 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 valid is that in fact there's one outside your building in london bridge it's a huge great tower and if you stand under that with a uh, air quality meter you get uh, a little reading it says unhealthy and you walk wow. away yeah and if you walk away about 100 meters you get good so it just goes to show what's happening around those... Uh, so uh, actually, quite an interesting uh, thing to know is how many of those vents there are, where they are, you could almost then do a whole exercise, which essentially well, that, could, could reinforce the point. Well, that's exactly right. And it, it, is, it is on my agenda to do in the next couple of months. The, the thing is... What we've got to do is actually trying to get across to this very dishonest mayor. Don't forget, he's done all sorts of things. He's used the, 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 the 4,000 death thing ad infinitum. But he's also actually ordered uh, um, uh, cameras and stuff like that before the public consultation was uh, uh, results were analysed. And, and that public consultation was a complete sham. Two out of three people didn't want the ULES extension, and he still went ahead. That's why he's... He, well, undemocratically, I, I'm, he, I, he's pathologically dishonest. And so talk to me, please, Howard, for callers and uh, viewers. And do give us a call if you've got a question for Howard, 0344 499 1000. Uh, this story about the, uh, the signs, the low emission signs being illegal and uh, therefore that um, uh, a lawyer thinks that actually TFA may have to repay huge sums of fines that have previously been collected. Well, that's right. Um, a, a very, very brave uh, business owner, a scaffolding boss in northwest London, actually, about a few years back, actually challenged because his staff uh, were driving their trucks into uh, the low emission zone areas. Now, LEZ is a bit different to ULEZ. Uh, LEZ are really the commercial vehicle fines. If you, um, it's you know up to three hundred pounds, a big truck has to pay to go into the LEZ areas. Huge amounts of money. But anyway, he challenged. Uh, 
um, uh, Transport for London took him on and a judge oh, an adjudicator in a transport tribunal actually uh, ruled in his favour and this is what it was about. It was very, very simple. He said there's not enough information to tell you that you're going to be charged. The congestion charge is different. That's got a big C, people will know, big red C in a circle, and that means you're going to be charged. But when it comes to ULEZ and LEZ, L-E-Z, the low emission zones, there's no information. In fact, a friend of mine who lives in the USA came over on a holiday and they actually rented a non-compliant car, just a bit non-compliant. And, um, and well, completely non compliant. And uh, she was turned to her husband and said, Oh, look, we're going to a, a low emission zone. That's good. This is all going to be very clean, darling. Anyway, she didn't realise that later on she got a letter uh, asking for something like, to, I think it's £350 fine uh, for going in. This is the point. The information's not clear. And also, there's a certain matter of the fact is if you go to some of these areas, there's information o overload. You can't, you, you really do not understand what you're in and where you are and what you've got to do. So this is clearly potentially very significant if actually it turns out that these signs are illegal, they haven't given the, the correct information, then not only the low emission zones, but also a lot of the ULES signs. And so many well, people are going to say, well, either I want my money back or I'm not going to pay. And we're looking at something like, in total, £350 million pounds could be paid back to five people. And I, I would recommend they just start appealing now. Why not do that? These signs are unlawful, illegal. They cannot be a Mr. Loophole, Nick Freeman, the lawyer who's a, you know, helps a motorists a lot of the time. Um, and he actually said, yes, it's quite correct. And in his opinion, these signs are unlawful. And, and a judge, an adjudicating judge in a transport tribunal has ruled in the favour of um, uh, of uh, Noel Wilcox, the uh, the actual head That's, of his Gordon. He's brilliant. This, he's, this story he's, is, that, that this particular story could grow and grow and run and run. Uh, Howard, let's take a call. Hopefully you can hear it from Gary, who is in London for, hopefully a question for you, Howard. Hi, Gary. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having me on. Great Hello, pleasure. Howard, as well. Um, Hello. Listen, gents, I, I agree wholeheartedly um, with everything you have said, both on ULES and Net Zero. Um, and I also want to make it clear that um, I'm, I'm a paid-up member, Richard, of, of Reform Party as well. Oh, and, you. Thank you, know, you, Gary. I, I, I think you're doing a wonderful job, both of you. And, Howard, I've been following you for years with the fair fuel thing. But my main concern is to both of you, right? I used to be a Tory voter. I'm not a Tory voter anymore, but when I was a Tory voter uh, and supporter, I never agreed. I just couldn't agree with everything that they came out with. I, I, I think that was pretty undemocratic anyway, not just towing the line just for the sake of things. But my main concern is, and it's a, a, addressing to Howard really, is Howard... I, I would love to support you for Mayor of London. I really would. but. I want Khan gone, and my main concern is that you could be one of the reasons why Khan gets re-elected, possibly by default, because of your polling at the moment. If your polling was to get better, and I know we've got a long time to go yet, and I hope things improve, and I hope then I'd be able to think, right, absolutely, 100% behind you, Howard. I'm, I, I, I do support you, Howard. I, I, I've met you down in Alpington, and I've also met Richard down at Alpington at one of the ULES uh, protests. Um, and, and I think you're both too... But your, your question to Howard, Gary, is... Yeah. Are you not concerned, Howard, um, that by going for the Mayor of London as well and competing against Susan Hall, who is, yes, I mean, a, a reasonable candidate, and I, I, I'm, I'm not for her, I'm not against her, but just say the, the, the polling I, I read at the moment is that Sadiq Khan is... And don't quote me on these figures because I know things change. Sadiq Khan is roughly on 40, 42%. Susan Hall roughly on 32, 34%. And your good self, Howard, on 10%. Now, you see, that could be the difference, Howard, with the votes that you do possibly get. And I hope you do do well. But that could mean that... So, so your question, Gary, is about splitting the vote. Let's, let's is, get, is, Howard, you, let's get, let's get Howard's you, response, Gary. You, you, you must have both heard this many, many yeah, let's times. Let's get Howard's response because we, then we've yeah, got to go to a course. break. Thank you. Actually, I mean, I get this thrown at me quite a lot, and uh, yeah. I promise, I promise you that I've got a lot of Tory voters coming to me. I've got a lot of Labour voters coming to me. If I decided, I, I, it, this took a lot for me to say that I'm going to stand as Mayor of London. For 13 years, I've been apolitical, and for 50 years, I voted Tory. I can't do it anymore. And you've got to take this into account. This is very important. Susan Hall and her general. Uh, 
uh, assembly members, a uh, you know, uh, greater number of assembly members, have actually been in opposition for seven years, and Sadiq Khan has ridden roughshod all across them. They're not capable of actually doing anything with him. If they get elected, they're going to keep you less. I'm going to get rid of all you less. I'm going to get rid of all low traffic neighbourhoods. I'm going to get rid of 20 mile an hour zones. I'm going to get rid of those giant cycle lanes. All those sorts of things which matter to get London motoring, moving again. And in essence, uh, I've already spoken to Susan Hall and I said I've offered her, offered her the deputy mayorship. Um, Howard, that's a great reply to Gary's, uh, Gary's question there about splitting the vote. And there is a key point, thank you for raising that, Gary, on this election, which is that this uh, is, for the first time, is under first-past-the-post as opposed to the, uh, the preference vote system, which does change it. But obviously there is many months to go and there are many more candidates that will probably emerge. I think at the last mayor election there were about 15 candidates. So who knows? Gary, great question, great call. Thank you very much. We